How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel and to my review of Superman in a can. That's right, he came in a can. It came covered in this noisy cellophane, so let's pull all that stuff off first. Here's what the lid of the tin looks like. You have this nice embeveled Superman symbol on top there. And all around the outside, you have classic Superman imagery. That's actually from one of the classic movie posters, Mezco logo, you got that Fancy barcode, more Mezco up top here. You got Superman right there. I guess now we'd open it up. Would this be considered opening up a, a can of whoop ass? Uh. And right in the top there, you can see the bag and the batteries. Let's pull them out. Oh, I guess everything just comes out. Whoop. Anything else in there? The instructions. Ooh, and this little bit of foam. This thing also makes a really nice drum. Oh wait, he also came with this. Little Mezitz guy. Let's just pause opening all this stuff up from inside of here and let's look at this quickly. I had to cut this with a razor blade. This packaging is like, oh cool. Ah, oh, would you look at that? It's a little tiny Gomez. Oh, and he also came with a little tiny boom box. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. This one also came with a Gomez sticker and Mezco Mondays. Show us your Mezits. Congratulations, you are now officially the proud owner of a Mezits. Use it to win free stuff. Okay, so because he comes in the tin, the packaging has to be really, really secure. That is a very interesting way of packaging a figure in a tin. Let's open it up, Let's pop the little buttons, cut the tape, and here is what you get. Now that's backwards. Okay, let me just take everything out and then we'll look at everything. Okay, and here's everything that we got inside of that tin. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, we also got the instructions right here for the Fortress of Solitude base and also three batteries. So as far as the accessories go, he's got three Kryptonian crystals. He's got the Kryptonite necklace that was put around his neck in Superman 1 where Luther tried to drown him in the pool. We got that great big hunk of fake Kryptonite from the third movie. That's the one that makes him go all nutty and get drunk and start flicking peanuts in the bar. We got a bunch of extra hands, flight hands, fingery hands, you know the drill. We got a zippy bag for putting everything in, a stand and an arm. I'm not gonna bother sticking the stand in the arm to show you how it worked. I, I just did, didn't I? We know how it works, Brad. Why are you showing everybody? And then we got this fantastic Fortress of Solitude crystal computer base. More on that after we put the batteries in. We'll light it up and have a look at it. And then of course, we got the figure with two extra heads. And wait a minute, didn't we only have one extra head with the promotional pictures. Like we had Stern Soup's face, and then we also had that smiling Superman face. The one that I always think of when I imagine him flying out in space at the end of all the movies. That means that this one, it wasn't advertised. And since we're talking about head sculpts, let's just continue on with that and look at each one up close and personal and really decide whether or not we feel like these look like Christopher Reeve as Superman. You be the judge yourself. I, you know, I feel like this one, from certain angles, definitely has that Christopher Reeve look to it. I don't feel like it's quite as bad as possibly some people online have been treating it, saying it's awful. It's not awful. There are times it does kind of give me a bit of a Leonard Nimoy feeling, but, but right here, that looks like Christopher Reeve to me. So I guess it really just does depend on the angle that you're looking at it. Here's the next head sculpt, the one that, if I'm being honest, I didn't know we were getting. So for me, this is kind of a bonus. And again, from certain angles, I feel like it, it kind of does look like Reeve, you know, with the shape of the nose and the forehead and the chin and stuff like that. The hairstyle definitely looks like Reeve's version of Superman. So, it, I mean, you gotta be the, the, the judge yourself. You gotta decide yourself. I feel like this one's okay. Again, from certain angles, I feel like it kind of looks like him, and from others, maybe not so much. Here's a third head sculpt, the smiling face sculpt, and to be honest, I don't really get much of a Christopher Reeve feeling from this. It doesn't really do it for me. To be fair, it is always challenging to get teeth done, to, to make teeth in a face sculpt painted look nice, but they did get the wrinkle lines, his smile and laugh lines on his cheeks, they do look authentic to Christopher Reeve's face. So, uh, E for effort, again, from some angles, it looks better than others, but I'll probably never pose him with this head unless it's for this video. Hang on a second, this is post-production editing, Brad. And I've looked up closer at the photos that I took. Remember, when you're looking at a figure with the naked eye, you sometimes miss things. But it's when I load the pictures into my computer and I can see all of the close-up macro shots 
Then I begin to see things that my naked eye missed. And one thing I missed about the skin tone is that it actually looks like he's either got freckles or possibly the beginning of liver spots. You see those little brown flecks? Christopher Reeve didn't have those. Superman doesn't have those. I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a more realistic skin tone, but up close, it really just doesn't work. It would have been better had they have gone with just a smooth complexion rather than with teenage acne. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we're taking that slow toe to head right from the bottom all the way to the top of the Christopher Reeve Superman figure so that you can take in the sights as I am here recording it because we're going to have a little conversation about this guy. I think, in general, it definitely looks pretty good. The color palette definitely looks pretty much accurate to the movie. And this figure's body looks pretty accurate to Christopher Reeves, because remember, he was not a super buff guy. I mean, he wasn't a pipsqueak. I mean, just check out this picture here, but he also was not nearly as big and buff as Henry Cavill in the role. So as far as the accuracy of the boots, I feel like they did a pretty good job recreating Christopher Reeves' iconic super footwear. I do feel like they could have better emphasized the lines that go around the boot here, I don't feel like they did that part right because it's definitely emphasized in the movie boots. And as you can see, there really is nothing here as far as the line work goes. The fabric itself for the suit looks nice. It doesn't really make him look like he's wearing a set of jammies. I will say those trunks, they kind of look like an adult diaper that he's wearing. They're just really big and bulky. I'm going to try and fix him after I've recorded the video and, and make these trunks look better. They certainly look a little bit better from behind, whereas from the front here, yeah, they just, they look a little bit too bulky. At least on that side. This side's not so bad. Superman's belt looks accurate to the movie, so no complaints for the overall look, and the little buckle looks nice. I will say having that white right there that you can see from the fabric that they've cut kind of, you know, wrecks the look a little bit. For Superman's torso, for one, the S actually looks authentic to the movie, so... They got the right print there, and all of the edges are really nice and crisp for this symbol, so good job. The sleeves here do kind of look a little bit thick around the wrist, but I understand why. They had to fold these under, otherwise you end up with fraying at the wrists. If you look at my Tony May version of a Christopher Reeve suit, you can see that the sleeves are just beginning to get a little fluffy. But with these, you'll never have that issue. The neckline of this super suit is definitely something that on Instagram I've seen is causing a little bit of contention. I feel like pushing mine up and flattening it out like that, it really actually doesn't look too, too bad. I think the overall challenge is having the cape tucked underneath the shirt and having it lie as flat as possible, I feel like that's the challenge. And that's why the neckline for this actually looks possibly a little bit too beefy, like it sticks out a little bit, but, you know, I, I I don't think it's that bad, actually. Okay, all right, editing Brad, jumping back in the video here. I thought that I would mention one thing that I missed when I was sitting there with the figure at the review bench, and that's that the collar line, the stitch lines at the collar for this Superman figure are actually much thinner, as in the distance between the stitch and the edge are much thinner on one side and much wider on the other. And that would definitely affect how the collar behaves, how well it will press down and stay flat to the chest, or if it's gonna stick up and be fairly unmanageable and look more like you're wearing a, a, a sweater knitted by grandma or something like that. Anyway, I return you back to the video and I'm gonna keep editing. And take note, this cape is in fact a wired cape, so you'll be able to pose the cape around. It's a nice fabric, so, you know, no complaints about the fabric. And then you have the big S on the back. And again, that is accurate to the movie. It's actually been stuck onto the back of the cape. My cape did come with a few tiny little pulls. I think that probably happened in the factory, so that kind of stinks. But overall, so far, I do feel like this is a pretty decent representation of Christopher Reeve as Superman. Now, as for Superman's articulation, we know it's going to be pretty much the same as the rest of the Mezco 112th Collective figures. So, there's waist ball joint action, as well as ball joint action in the torso here. You can actually see the line of how this one is articulated, and it definitely looks and feels a little bit different than your average Mezco 112th figure. For Superman's arms, 
Does he have a butterfly joint? I don't think he has a butterfly joint. I'm really pushing and getting nothing. But he does have the rounded hinge. He's gonna have the bicep swivel. Does he have double jointed elbows? If he does, they're not really double jointing very well. Ah yes, we can see close in here. He actually does have double jointed elbows. Let's try to pull some of the fabric out of there as we articulate this guy's elbows and see if, nope. That's all you're gonna get. He's also got the articulation point at the bottom and at the top of the neck. So you got the ball peg where the head is and you've got some movement right there in the neck. As you can see with the neck, the head, the torso and the waist, you can get him into some pretty accurate, realistic looking flight poses. Below the belt, we know that Mezco figures have the ball joints. He's got roundy motion like that. He's got double jointed knees. Oh boy, do they ever do a good job. Why do we get so excited when they actually do their job? And then there is some rotation here. I'm not sure if that's intended to be articulation. I think it probably is. And then at the feet, he's got the rounded ball joints like that. They're good for what they need to be. I mean, he's wearing a boot, so honestly, <laughs> How much farther forward and backwards could you move your foot if you're wearing boots like Superman? So, as far as articulation goes, honestly, I think he has enough articulation for someone like me. I know there might be other people out there that wish he has more, but I, I think I'm satisfied. I would like to add something in, though, that I didn't really mention previously when I was talking about Superman's cape, is that after messing with the articulation, I will say I paid more attention to the cape and how it fits and it look it feel it looks like a bath towel. It kind of looks more like a bath towel sitting in there like that. Yeah, kind of big. Okay, and now let's look at this base together. This fortress of solitude computery action figure base. The place where he puts his crystals and it's going to light up and look really fantastic. It looks fantastic when it's not lit up. Jeez, they did a great job with this one. Underneath, you'll see a little battery compartment. 1 2 3 ah. Uh, uh, and then you got to put the little flap back on there. Make sure you screw it in nice and tight. And then you can turn it on. Oh, hey, wow. Oh, there's two different there's two different functions. Let's read the instructions first. Okay, number one, take the thing off, pop in the batteries. Number two here, you uh, put the crystals in like that. And okay, lights up, function, okay. So essentially it's saying when I stick a crystal in there, it should light up. Oh, cool. It lit up. Ooh, will it light up different colors if I put in different crystals? Here's the other clear crystal. Nope, same color. So they, they gave us two of the exact same clear crystal. Okay, and now let's stick in the green crystal from Superman 4. Let's see what that does. Okay, so the crystals, no matter what one you use, it's going to light it up white. So what happens if we do this? Okay, well, it stays lit. And when you pull the crystals out, it's lit. All right, so if you want it lit up all the time, regardless of the crystals, then you have it set to that. And you have it set to the middle when you want to just have it lit up when you put a crystal in there. Eh, get it, I, I can't see what I'm doing. Eh, like that, ha ha. That is very, very super cool. So now that we've all looked at this figure together, what do I think about him? Has he convinced me that a man can fly, or at least in this case, a 1 12th scale Superman figure can fly? Or does he fall horribly short of the mark and when he tries to take to the skies, he just comes crashing down and gets a face full of dirt and gravel? Well, I'll admit that the first images that I saw of him online popping up on Instagram, a lot of them really weren't very favorable. They really didn't make him look very good. And I went into this review thinking, oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? But now that it came out the other end and I can see the figure for what it is, I feel like, the body proportions actually look like Christopher Reeve. Not too bulky and not too gangly. The face, depending on the angle you're looking at, it actually manages to kind of look like the man himself. Again, that point is definitely up for debate. I just don't feel like this one horribly, terribly misses the mark of looking like Christopher Reeve's face. And even though I'm not a huge fan of the fact that the cape kind of does look like he's just tucked a bath towel into his shirt, I feel like, in general, this is, without question, the very best 1 12th scale of Christopher Reeve. But with that, I'm done. So have yourself a super awesome, fantastic DC day, and take care. Until next time, bye for now.